Last year, about this time, we were entering our second month of not knowing what COVID was or how it was transmitted. We didn't know who was actually infected or how to leave the home while remaining healthy. The world was sheltering in place in their homes, worried that it could be years before any of us would be able to visit with family and to give and receive hugs. You may recall last year's Mother's Day celebration sermon when I shared that for over 25 years, my mother only requested that on, Mother Day, on Mother's Day, my sisters and I would simply call her on the phone. But that request changed when COVID appeared. She acknowledged that it was not safe for us to visit, but she desired a hug, not a virtual hug, an actual hug. Unfortunately, we were unable to do that last year, and there is still some concern about how we could do that with the current threat of COVID variants running amok. But as additional persons get their COVID vaccines, my family and I hope that sometime this fall we can gather to celebrate Easter, Mother's Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and several family events we missed safely and together. I'm looking forward to returning to Cincinnati sometime this year so I can see my mom, because it's one thing to hear her voice each week over the phone and using Zoom, but it's completely different to be held in her comforting arms and the lack thereof, especially when it's those comforting arms that have always been there for me when I've hurt emotionally after a friend and I had a disagreement. And it's always been her caring hands that placed band-aids over scrapes and bruises which I endured while attempting to ride a bicycle. Then she would give me a hug to reassure me that I would mend and be able to try riding that bike again soon. I pray that all of you had a mom or a mother-like figure in your life who cared for you in a similar way. Even if that one you turn to for assistance is the almighty creator of heaven and earth, as Isaiah did and encouraged others to do. In Isaiah's prophetic work, he describes God using maternal imagery. Isaiah spoke to the generation of Israelites who returned from the Babylonian exile and discovered that Jerusalem, the city that, that they had yearned to return to for a whole generation, still lay only in ruins. Recognizing that these recent exiles are going to flee back to Babylonia, Isaiah declared that the God of Israel would reach out with gentle and caring hands of a mother to embrace them, declaring, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. It may be surprising because they probably were seeking the muscular arms that would shelter them from their anger at the former Babylonian empire for their destructive acts against Jerusalem. But they also discovered that there were people living in Jerusalem and that they had been there for an entire generation. Yet not a single one of those persons had repaired or even attempted to repair the temple of God. No one had rebuilt the walls around Jerusalem. And as these exiles studied the scene before them, they felt emotions of anger and defeat. It was in that moment that Isaiah's voice sang out, informing them that God's motherly arms cradled their lives to comfort them and to provide the soothing assurance that it would be okay. God would go and help them rebuild the city and the temple and their homes as they settled in their homeland. Isaiah proclaimed that God would bandage their wounds and comfort them when they grew weary. Just as God, who like a mother hen shelters and comforts her young under her wings, God has done this for multiple generations. Isaiah recognized that God is a loving comforter declaring that she remains near when God's people are in trouble. In the Psalms, the psalmist alludes to God's motherly 
care, stating that soft and warm hands made us and fashioned us in the womb of our mothers. And then returning to Isaiah's proclamation, he declares that God comforts us like a good mother comforts her child. Granted, this is not to suggest that dads can't be comforting. After all, both mothers and fathers are capable of wiping the tears from our eyes, and each are able to mend our wounds and wrap us up in protective arms. But for many of us, when the stress of life gets to be too much, or we experience situations that are bigger than ourselves, or a knee is scraped, or a hope dashed, it's typically to mom to whom we run, often holding back tears until we're safely held in our arms. This was true for many of us when we were children, and it remains true for many of us even as adults. And note, here Isaiah is addressing adults, adults who not only need comfort from their mothers, they also need the comfort and care from God who could ease their anxiety and fear. Isaiah reminded the Hebrews that God was present and would cradle them to both heal their wounds and give them encouragement to be brave and trust that God can help them overcome this adversity that they have discovered. And they did. Trusting God would guide them, they established a camp for the returning refugees, and together, cradled by God's caring arms, they rebuilt the temple and the city walls. With God's assurance, they restored the city of Jerusalem, and the people thrived under the shelter of God's care. Though this is not to say they lived happily ever after, they still experienced troubles and grief. They had plenty of moments of great anxiety. Yet, as they were reminded, just as the psalmist reminds us, when our anxieties are multiplied, God's presence and arms of comfort bring serenity. This assurance is helpful as we recall that God is like our good and caring moms, and God is standing alongside us as we face obstacles in our lives. Acknowledging that we have this wonderful source of support, we can rise to meet each day brand new, encouraged by God, and that we can face any situation. We may not enjoy the experience, but we know at the end of the struggle, we can rest in God's motherly arms. And for those of us who have been isolated from our biological mothers or even our adoptive mothers here on earth due to COVID, for those of us whose mothers have transitioned to the heavenly kingdom of God, or for those who just have never met their mom, it may be difficult to remember what it was like to receive comfort from her arms. But on this day that we celebrate mothers, we are encouraged to recall her caring arms which comforted and nurtured us. We are encouraged to remember her endurance and unconditional love. And on this day, we are gently nudged to think back to the time when she would pick us up, brush off the dirt, mend our wounds, and encourage us to go out and try again. And for those of us who did not experience these things from our biological mothers, prayerfully, there was someone in your life who filled this role so you're able to recall their comfort and care you received and mended your wounds, held you close, and offered you peace, thus allowing you, like many of us, to recall the nurture and comfort we receive from these mothers and mother-like figures which allows us to be grateful for their gentle embrace, which in turn allows us to recognize the gentle embrace of God who comforts us and loves us. On this Mother's Day, we can express our gratitude and thanks for these, our earthly mothers, while expressing our gratitude to God for the comfort that has been offered to us in the past and the tender comfort we continue to receive even during this pandemic. Grateful, we acknowledge that whenever we experience loss, anxiety, and obstacles in our lives, God is the one who arrives and showers us with love. And God is the one who expresses that love to us with comfort and care. 
receiving God's care, allow God to encircle you with arms of love and tender mercy. Feel the comforting presence of God. And when you're feeling anxious, allow God to draw near as you enjoy the sweet divine care that leads us through the rough patches of life to the places of rest and healing. And just as God has delivered vaccines and soon the world will be released from this pandemic so we can visit with family and give and receive hugs once more. No, it only took a year instead of the multiple years we, that were predicted. We have much to be thankful for. And it is all from God's motherly care for the world. Motherly care that we receive from those we call mom. So God's blessings and happy Mother's Day.